Let's get this party started. Coverage tight, spotlight on tomorrow. Who you with? Trust, you'll be delighted that you followed. At first contention, the invention. We debate sports, of course we should mention. What's that? We cover games, we don't play suspensions. We 100, so if your star's missing, we let you know your squad surely gone fishing. We never fish though, no, not our motto. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. I said hola, senors and senoritas. Welcome to another episode of First Contention. I'm your boy, Marvin S. Banks. Two-man tag team here with Mr. Ty. Whoa, so Cena. Salutations, folks. We got the best two of the squad here. Yep, cutting off the dead weight. Yeah, just, just no two. You know how the cream rises to the top? Exhibit A. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's get right into it. NBA playoffs here. Dun, 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 dun. Playoffs? First, first round just about over for a few teams, but let's talk about this first round, whether you know some of the games are still going and some of these sweeps that happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, we are the North should be. We are defeated because I am totally surprised that Toronto got swept by the Washington Wizards in the first round and not only swept, but old man River Paul Pierce, old the truth, talking trash to him <laughs> as they was being swept, said they didn't have <clears throat> it and they wasn't afraid of it. And he proved why it <laughs> wasn't there for the Raptors as they got killed. I did not see that coming. After you seeing Washington struggle throughout the whole year, and see how they just got beat down in game, game four, it wasn't even close. They could have just went to game three and just advanced, just stay up there. And Paul Pierce said it. He didn't want to go through customs anymore. So, hey, hey. you know. Paul Pierce let it go. He motivated John Wall and Bradley Bill. Exactly. And you said the game. You're, I wasn't watching the game, but I tuned in and I saw the score. I said, oh my goodness. Uh, this game, final score of 125 to 94. A lot to a little. A, a lot to a little. And Toronto, I mean, you're, you're a higher seed. Mm -hmm. you're, they were the, the four seed facing the five seed. And mm -hmm. the Wizards came to play. So the Wizards, you know, another team we said, can they compete with the number one seed like the Atlanta Hawks? We want to see how they do in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Not to mention their series now tied at two after, you know, Brooklyn took a couple. So Yeah, Deron uh, Williams had a... Uh, a Deron Williams sighting, <laughs> period. Yeah, for real, a hot tub time machine moment. He spinning back the clock a little bit, you know, pouring in over 30 points, knocking down seven threes yesterday. I mean, he was uh, es caliente yesterday. And fuego. Exactly. Uh, again, this number one seed in the Hawks. We said it. You know, it was great. You have a good season. Coach Boonholzer, coach, coach of the year. year. Exactly. But what happens when the playoffs get here? The Wizards has turned it up. And obviously, your number two seed and the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers sweep the Celtics, but things could be a little better in Cleveland. Uh, yeah, Kevin Love is out, like dislocated shoulder, hurt shoulder. But Dis the, yeah, just the Celtics was like, you know, if we're going to lose, we're going to have to take some of y'all out with us. <laughs> Even though J.R. Smith did take out Jay Crowder with the backhand smack, though. That was, it was nice technique, just kind of rolling, just, you know. Exactly. It was swift. Exactly. But we're not going to leave the fact that one team was down 0-3. They have now made it 3-2. They're heading back to Milwaukee. And, you know, maybe they won't win game six, but they certainly have made things very interesting in Chicago. Suicide Watch in Chicago quite yet? No, absolutely not. And we've discussed how disrespectful it was after the loss of J.R. Smith and Kevin Love. All the analysts are talking about Chicago and Cleveland in the next round of playoffs. It may be a little disrespectful, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the Bulls are going to pull through. It, it's disappointing. It's disheartening. We've seen all the, the unbelievable turnovers that the Bulls have been doing. And Milwaukee's length is, is holding up, you know, at the rim. Everyone's trying to drive and Giannis out here swatting things. Henson out here swatting things, so yeah. it begs the question, what would this series look like 
had Jabari not hurt himself. Or what would that series have looked like if the Bucks would have won game three in the double overtime game? Just as easily as it was 2-3, it could be 3-2 Milwaukee. But, I mean, Chicago, turnovers are a mainstay in Chicago, i.e. Jay Cutler. Ooh, but, teaser for later on. Not to mention, the, they've been riddled with injuries for all these years, and they finally, the shoe was on the other foot for Cleveland in terms of their injuries and suspensions. And if they let this series drag out, mm -hmm. it could end up biting them in the butt. You know, you could have LeBron James on the rope in a game six, game seven situation, but you've taken so long to finish the Bucks that Kevin Love comes back and that's what they need to put him over the top. So yeah. I know we didn't discuss a lot about the West. Is there anything interesting about the West besides the Clippers and Spurs series? I mean, Golden State won, Golden Houston's probably gonna win, mm -hmm. Memphis is probably gonna win. Anything else stands out to you, Ty? I would say the West, the Western uh, playoff series have been a lot more interesting I than think the, the Eastern has. I mean, yeah, but the West these so teams in the West, these are like those are like your your alliance. Like we have these the, a couple teams the West in the is East we're looking cut at. And dry. But the West, I mean, Golden State, unbelievable at home, Game Three down by twenty. And they just come roaring back. Uh, it, it, Steph Curry with the shot, boy. Ooh, you don't, again, you don't like to put a lot of weight in a jump shooting team. But if there ever was a team, it's this team with the best shooting backcourt that we've ever seen. I mean, Anthony Davis, like I said a couple of episodes ago, showed out. But the rest of his team didn't come out with him. They put up a fight. Yeah, that's, again, the Thunder would have done more that eighth seed, I believe. But... Good sign from the Pelicans. They put up a five point next without the point. Of, I mean, good for them. Yeah, you know, you talked about Steph Curry. I know MVP voting is pretty much over and done with. I know it's coming around the corner, but Ty, are you still convinced that Steph Curry is still your MVP moving forward? Yes. Okay. Hands down. Cut and dry. Plays in the West. Swept in eighth seed. You do what a number one seed is supposed to do. ATL shouted. <laughs> Message. You're playing a tougher, a tougher division, tougher conference. And, you know, you're prolific on offense. You're the best team on defense. I mean, you are leading the best team in the league. You deserve to be the MVP. Yeah, ever since Steph made Chris Paul fall, he kind of just inserted his MVP voting right there. That, that was one of his signature plays right there. I definitely agree with you on that. I, Steph Curry, I think James Harden has kind of, I don't want to say tailed off a little bit, but I feel like, you know, playoffs have started. He's kind of done so, tailed off just a tad bit. I think Steph Curry has done enough for them to, done enough for him to be MVP. Number one team out there in the West. They talk about, down three, so they talk about right. Heisman moments in college. Mm -hmm. That, that Chris shot to, not that the, shot over a Anthony Davis. Yes, that, sh that was a moment where that pretty much signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah, he's getting into that upper echelon of, is he, probably one of the greatest shooters ever. Now, he has a couple of hurdles to go over. Personally, I think it's uh, Reggie. Reggie. But... Larry Bird. But Steph is... Uh, he's climbing those charts, man. He's climbing those charts, and he's not taking any prisoners. That boy jump shot is smooth, too. Let's switch to the sixth man. First man off the bench. Uh, Sweet Lou. Oh! Sweet Lou. Really. He's got the juice! The J.U. Ice! I don't, but the thing about it is, should he have won six men now that his team is now swept? It's kind of like a grain of, you know, you take it with is, it. It is, it is, but. It's like bittersweet, like, oh, thanks for the award, but now I'm at the, I'm really at the crib just chilling. I like it, but you know, Drake had the song Six Men. Boo and nothing soft, win it like I'm Lou Will. Six yeah. men like Lou Will. Two girls and they get along like, like Lou, like I'm Lou Will. So I mean, I like it. He called it. He called his shot, yeah. and, and Lou Will. He came up and showed out. I mean, it, it shows what happens when when things are good at home. Yeah, he definitely did. But I know one thing that did surprise me: Kawhi Leonard winning Defensive Player of the Year. I think that award should have went to Mr. DeAndre Jordan out for the Clippers. I mean, when you're averaging over 15 rebounds, when you're protecting the paint, you throwing anything that comes near it. I, I don't see how DeAndre Jordan didn't win it or somebody like Draymond Green, too, as well. You know, Kawhi has missed some time. And he's just now becoming Kawhi that he thought he the was going to Yeah, we thought he was going to be now, you know, locking people up and 
blocking shots and different things of that nature, but I don't know. I can't see him defensive player of the year this year. I can't see it. Are you now not now you know I love me some Lob City. Lob City. Said Chris Paul was gonna be MVP going into the season before he was crucified by Steph Curry. <laughs> and I got love for DeAndre Jordan. But the second piece you said, Draymond Green, for them to score that many points that they do in Golden State and be the number one team on defense, uh, Mr. Green, former Spartan, go Green, has a lot to do with that. Not to mention the games. Draymond's only missed three games. He's played 79 games this season. And Kawhi's missed 18 games. Now, for those who don't know, this is how it's, it's worked out. Uh, first place votes is five, you know, five points. points there. Second and third place votes, three and three. Now, Draymond got 45 first place votes to Kawhi's 37. Exactly. He got a lot of first place votes. But where Kawhi gained ground on him was 41 second place votes to Draymond's 25 and then 25 third place votes to Draymond's 17. So that's how we caught him. But based on what Draymond Green has done for his team, mm -hmm. for them to go from a really good team to Almost I don't want to say elite. We'll, we'll put them sub, sub elite. Almost epic, yeah. But you got to remember that. I think he was host. It, Steve Kerr made the, made the switch to start Draymond Green over David Lee. And mm -hmm. when David Lee has got healthy, he still has started Draymond Green. David Lee is unheard of right now. Nobody knows. There's a MIA from David Lee. He's on the back of a milk carton right now. You know, we don't know where he is. I just, you know, he's a candidate to be traded mm -hmm. to keep Draymond Green there. And going to stay because he is a free agent after this year. So it's, I would give him most improved player. That's what I like to see. Uh, well, most improved player is going to Jimmy Butler. Um, so, Ooh. but defensive player, you can you can trust him at the elbow. He can shoot the three. He plays defense. Fifty-one more blocks than Kawhi Leonard. Perhaps it calls into question needing to reevaluate the voting process and how you it's 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 like a certain election back in the day, you know, the electoral votes and yeah, you, things they, come out and it's not necessarily what you thought it would be. Yeah, I think there was a couple of missing votes that may be landing in Texas sometime soon. You never know. Oh well. Let's move on. Two days from tonight, NFL draft. Draft day. Johnny Manziel. Oh, out of rehab, so good for him. Uh, five years later. But let's touch on draft, uh, especially your team, the Packers. What are some things that you need Green Bay to do to get past the Seahawks? Well, you know, this team doesn't have a lot of holes on their roster. I mean, they were five minutes away from going to the Super Bowl, but there are a couple of needs that they do need. Um, another cornerback, they lost Tremont, they lost Devon House uh, this past year. They need inside linebacker. And I guess you will probably – or offense probably throwing tight end help. But when you address those needs at the 30th pick, it's kind of like, it's kind of <laughs> hard to. The top tight end, Max Williams here at the University of Minnesota, is he really worth the first round pick? Sky Ma. Yeah, top inside linebacker is Eric Kendricks, I believe, from UCLA. Little lightning of plans, only about six foot, three, uh, 230 pounds. Top corner, Trey Wayans out of uh, Michigan State, Wisconsin okay. native, but he's probably far off the board. We don't know who's going to be there. Probably what the Packers probably going to do is probably trade out the 30th pick. Let one of these teams that need a quarterback come in and draft the third quarterback, probably Bryce Petty or Brent Hundley, somebody of that nature to come in. But I know I was looking at the Chicago Bears mock draft and something that scares me a lot. It's what scared me to see another prolific wide receiver in this division. Not too long ago, Randy Moss was just out of here. <laughs> AP might be out of here. We just lost Ndamukong Sue out this division. Now I'm hearing that Mr. Cooper or Mr. White might be in a bearish uniform if he's there. Ty, what do you think about that? After this past season, we lost Brandon Marshall, and it hurt the season of Chicago. Yeah, they, that hurt. They that. was ready to riot the best receiver in Chicago history in his short tenure there. And yes, all the draft experts are saying Kevin White, especially looks like Amari Cooper could be out of there. And I'm, I'm, I don't see it. I think you need to get back, back to your roots in Chicago. Vic Fangio, defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers is now in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You need to rebuild that defense, which was 
horrible. Let me throw you some stats about this defense here. Uh, they were second to last in yards per play with six yards of play last season. So they was ranked 30 out of 30 second. Yes. That's not, yes. That's not very well. They were third in yards per game with 377.1 yards. You know who the two teams that were worse than them? Who? Do you remember that we talked about a Thursday night game where defense was optional next week? New Orleans and the Atlanta Falcons. So when those defense are worse than you, you need help. We need some help up front, but mainly, mainly in the back end. So who would you like them to draft, Ty? The only player that I think has enough history, Trey Waynes from Michigan State. Landon Collins from, from Alabama. We've seen how some of these Alabama products are when they get into the league. Well, the last couple that the Packers have picked kind of have been very successful. Ha ha Clinton Dix and Mr. Eddie Lacy. Ha ha two point conversions. Lots of players beef on that line. You know, they said a Danny Shelton, but hey, you know, it's a passing league. You got to face Aaron Rodgers. If he's going to come off in your sub packages, I can't see them using a number one overall pick for someone who can't have that much of an impact. But Kevin White, this is a one year wonder. Please don't roll the dice. Go for a sure thing. If Amari Cooper is there, then I'm more okay with you with you, you taking. Cooper. You know, I think Amari Cooper is probably the best wide receiver in this draft class. I think this draft class can compare to the uh, 14 draft class just a year before. When you look at Cooper, when you look at Devontae Parker, when you look at White, then you look at some of these other receivers: Jalen Strong, Perriman, uh, uh, from the University of Miami, Philip Dorsett, Speedster. So when you look at some of these receivers compared to the ones last year of the Sammy Watkins, Odell Beckham Jr., Mike Evans, Mike Evans I think they compare this is going to be another pretty good, pretty good wide receiver class. But what separates this class from last year's class, the running backs, definitely the running backs. And I would love to see Green Bay get Duke Johnson from the University of Miami, a speedster. Someone to balance the power of Lacey and have a little lightning. You know, somebody that can give a little 90-yard uh, uh, touchdown. I mean, when you got 6'3", 230-pound uh, MVP himself back there, you really don't have too many things to really worry about. This is true. This is true. You like Duke? I like Dorsett. Just mm -hmm. mentioned him. Again, I believe as the Chicago Bears need to take a pass on a wide receiver and work on that defense, which was so awful. It's something we're not accustomed to seeing in Chicago and take a speedster later on. Not to mention your last hurricane, Devin Hester has moved on to Atlanta and we've taken a hit in special teams. So when you have a quarterback who serving turnovers left and right, it really <laughs> helps when you're missing that field position that Devin had. So when you have Philip Dorsett, Second fastest 40 in the combine. Got paid by, I believe it was Adidas. Gave some money to the top two 40s at the combine. You need that element back inside your offense. You know, I just can't wait to see Jimmy Clausen for Thanksgiving. But let's move on to our another subject. A fall, Shade! A fall from grace as Josh Hamilton has been recently traded from the Angels back to the Rangers after signing a big five-year, $125 million deal back in 2013. Now, 2010, he was the MVP of the league. When he was with the Rangers, he was a five-time All-Star all those years. Ty, have you ever seen a player fall from grace like he has? Not to the same extent. I mean, he's so proven what he's done. Mm -hmm. The players that came to mind, well, the first one will be Ricky Williams, especially as it related to, to substances. Ricky Williams, was doing his thing as a Dolphin. Mm -hmm. Cover of NFL Street, I remember getting NFL Street. Ricky oh, was my wow. favorite running back. Oh, wow. A player that, when drafted by the Saints, they gave up all their picks to get this running back out of Texas. They did more than that. They gave up firstborn children. They gave up <laughs> wives. They gave up left arms. They gave up every... We give you the city of New Orleans. We just want Ricky Williams here. Mm -hmm. And he ends up saying, hey, you know, I need to take a, a hiatus. Another play, you talk about how strong the draft is this year. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland Browns. Johnny Manziel. I'm, Johnny Manziel hasn't proven it. A Brown who has proven it. Josh Gordon 
hasn't reached the height that Hamilton reached, you know, took the Texans to two uh, World Series. Mm -hmm. But Josh Gordon showed, Flash showed that he was hands down the best receiver after playing a short league. And what happened to him? You know, pulled over the UIs, uh, the marijuana the possession, mm -hmm. and for him to, you know, miss, miss the season and affect his free agent status. So two very, very talented players where, you know, external things and things off the field uh, shifted the course of their careers. Well, I'll give you somebody else, Dwight Gooden from mm. the, um, the Mets. You know, Daryl Strawberry, somebody else like that. Uh, you know, people that were supposed to be transcending athletes in the league. And Josh Hamilton, everybody knows his story. You know, he was drafted by the Rays, took some time off to get his life together, had to work his way back up through the work, uh, Rays organization, later traded to the Reds, signed a big deal with the Rangers. And, you know, you saw this improving story. You saw him battle his addictions and overcome his addictions. Now to only relapse and go through the pain and go through the struggles that he's mm. going through right now. I was talking to somebody earlier today, a coworker, that is, it's disheartening. I feel bad for Josh, uh, Josh Hamilton for the simple fact that we understand that it's a lot of pressures, a lot of temptations out there, but his life can be in peril. You know, there's reports that his wife and him got into it real bad and his wife cheated on him. That's how come he was spiraling out of control and different things of that nature. But even if he passed the drug test, he was still honest enough to Major League Baseball to say, you know, I relapsed. You know, yep. yeah. I relapsed. So it's, it, it's disheartening. You know, I root for Josh uh, Hamilton. You know, I hope he has a lot of success down in Texas. I hope he can get his life back together, but only time will tell. You know, when he did leave the Rangers, he did mention how Texas was you know, a football town, a football state, and he was right. But you'd like to think, again, in terms of rooting for him, that returning back to the Texans, a team that understands him fairly well, perhaps being back around those, those you know, back in that the same, back with those people around him, mm -hmm. can, can bond together and get him back to where he can be on the field and uh, produce the way he used to in his, his MVP years and his, his All-Star years. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully so. You know, Texas is a, is a hitter's part, so we shall see. Quote from Josh Hamilton. And? He said, your environment has something to do with it. I love the guys on my team in L.A. It was awesome there, but it was L.A. It wasn't Texas. So perhaps... Getting back home is exactly what he needs to get back on the right path. Exactly, exactly. So we're rooting for you. But let's turn into people that do not want to be on the show are social media roast. Got the it. memes, the videos, the pictures, the jokes of the week. Ty, let's get it going. They should have never gave y'all internet. So our first one is, who would you rather shoot free throws? We have Shaq, we have Dwight, we have Ben Wallace, we have DeAndre Jordan. The league's flirting with the idea of changing the hacker insert name here. <laughs> who would you, yo, if your girl was about to go through your phone and you had uh, a couple of inappropriate pictures and you had to pick one of these four to make two free throws in a row, who would you choose? You know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna confess to my girl. <laughs> you better just go, to, you better just go through my phone. <laughs> I don't trust not a one of these fools, not a one of these fools. I don't trust. I trust Shaq, you cause trust I can, Shaq. I can talk. Hey Shaq, I ain't gonna snitch on you like Kobe did. <laughs> I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do what Kobe did to you, partner. Please, <laughs> please, please help me out. Please help me out. Someone who doesn't need help with his shot. Oh, Steph Curry. With the shot, boy. Why does he just please cut off this unibrow? This unibrow is probably the worst thing that ever happened to man. Do you think he'd be as hot as he is now, Anthony Davis, without? Yes. Okay. Yes. This play speaks for himself. Yes. Huh. Ooh, oh. We talked about that game three <laughs> shot. I mean, it speaks for itself. Clutch, break, uh, break, and accelerator. And, well, Steph Curry, Steph Curry is clutch. Cooking. Cooking. Yeah. Period. Period. And I, I felt the same way, especially when you're down by 20. It's, it's one of those games where, hey, time out, I got I to use the bathroom. <laughs> and you come back and everything just spirals out of control. And you're like, what happened <laughs> while I was gone? 
Yeah, you put the sentence down from uh, <laughs> all matter to pro or all star to pro. Mm -hmm. No, you just put it down. And you know, oh, see, oh, this, oh, see. Relevant. It's very, very relevant. Relevant. Because it's so, Steph Curry was so disrespectful in New Orleans at that. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he got out of there. You know, the Nola, they don't play down there in Nola, homie. Hey, I bet there's a bunch of little Steph Curry dolls floating around there. For real. Hey, let's transition. A lot of people say we don't talk about hockey enough. So let's talk about hockey. Blackhawks moving on. Oh, wow. Er, hey, hey, we made it. We made it. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a little snap fool there. Instead of black hawks, <laughs> the blacks won. And we made it. And start moving forward. Didn't know so many of us start playing hockey, Ty. Hey, all I can tell you, I can tell you one thing. Some changes probably occurred at ABC7. You know, if you want to name a Chicago team name represents the city, I guess this would be the Chicago Blacks. <sighs> now let's go to another Chicago team. Uh, you know what? After losing game three, this brought so much joy to my heart because this is so much of the truth, and I appreciate that fan. You know, you guys still do have Jay Cutler, so it did bring a little smile hey, inside my heart. Hey, it's fair. It's fair. We're like, hey, yeah, you can beat us, but hey, look, we love the Bulls. Love what Michael did, but hey, we love our football, and Hey, when there's a Bulls fan talking smack to you and you, you're talking about fear the deer, that's, that's the perfect, perfect degree of shade to throw back to someone from the shot. Yep, exactly. Exactly. And well, not only did Wale, <laughs> but Pierce and everybody from Washington, D.C. has some type of meme for Drake <laughs> in Toronto. I saw her, a meme that said, if you were reading this, you already been swept. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh, so disrespectful on so many degrees. Those who don't know, Wale for learn. Watch, he, hey, he claims everything, Washington. So, hey, hey, he's got the ice. He's got the ice with the broom on there. Then so, Drake, no. That's so disrespectful on so many levels. So many, dis so, so much. I love social media. It lets, it lets us know that these celebrities they're just like us. They're just like us, Marvin. Yeah, they really do care. They really do care about what's going on with social media. But funny jokes, brouhaha's. That's all we got for you today. But before you go, you know, because we appreciate you watching and we'd like you to continue watching. Don't forget, like the video, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and while you're at it, subscribe to that YouTube channel. If you got questions, send us our way. We'll, we'll answer them on the show. Use the hashtag WeSports. Exactly. For the two best people here on First Contention, I am Marvin Banks, and this is Ty Sosina signing off. You're all in. Give me two claps. Give me two claps. Give me two claps and Rip Flair. Woo! Swerve. Ride with First Contention. That's full throttle We sport. We sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. We sport. We sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. Game face grit, like born for playoffs. Say it all in small time, like payoffs.